Hey, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I can't hear you. How about now? Can you hear now? There it is. Sorry. Oh. Sorry if I was interrupting things. Oh, no. Glad, glad you told me. But we just called the meeting to order. That's all you missed. Uh, first, first order business, approval of the minutes from July. Anybody have any comments, questions, corrections? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Raise your hand. Aye. All right. Thank you, John. Minutes are approved. Um, in, in lieu of public comments here, since we are, are public, our um, our new upcoming members. So very quickly, I want to thank all three of you for coming. That's great. Really good to see you all. Um, and for not everybody has met you. So if you could just each one just stand up real quick, say your name. <laughs> Melissa Winston, nice to meet you all. Hey, everybody. I'm Joanna Cameron. Hi, guys. I'm Mark Wanzak. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming again. And we'll go our names <laughs> down the row. Ryan Schill. Ellen Miller. Jeff Petro. Judy Bishop. Nick Georgetti. Ernie Lynch. Um, John Bajarski in the back. That's right. That's right. But uh, and thanks again. And, and feel free to, you know, if you have questions or anything oh, as Matt, we go we, on. We missed Matt. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Hartman. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> um, but as as we go down through the meeting, we'll we'll hit a couple of um, items that are meant to be, you know, kind of informational, some turnover for from those of us leaving the committee. So hopefully that that helps start building you guys up to speed a little, so it's not quite as awkward the first meeting. So I'm I'm really glad you all came. Uh, project updates. First up, sustainability, Jeff. Yeah, and I'll give you a few minutes on sustainability just so I can I can bring you guys up to speed. So we were uh, there was a group, um, an effort to um, be certified gold in 2019 through PA Sustainability, and and we did that. So the canvas was certified gold in 2019. The um, it, it expired in December 8th of 2023. It actually expired. A little bit sooner than that, but they gave us another year in 2023. Um, I came on two years ago, you know, 28 months ago or something. I've been working with John, been working with, with the municipality um, to recertify McCandless as gold um, uh, in, in PA sustainability tests. It was 181 different questions. Uh, we have worked through this through meetings, through, uh, you know, through research, and, and we got it down to two points. It is literally on two points, but but they're two important points, and they're they're not, you know, it it, it, it it's either all or not, whatever right. it comes to this, and they are they are related to greenhouse gases, and scope one and scope two greenhouse gas. Do we monitor that? So so scope one is our greenhouse gases that uh, we control, so our boiler or our heat or air, air conditioning output, and based on the fact that we have a new system, HVAC system. Uh, we should be able to say that we were this in you know in 2023 and now we are this but we have to be able to measure it and measure it by their standards secondly is scope two which are uh, which is something that we contract so we buy energy through something and and you know how what is our usage of that maybe that will decrease and but we have to show our work mm -hmm. basically so um i don't i don't think it's hokey i think it's if we want to be truly certified um, you know, a gold community, um, then we do this. And, and I and, and I still have a meeting set up with PA Sustainability, Peter Buck, uh, to go through and bring the municipal staff into a, an easier you know, um, procedure. I don't want her to look at this thing and say, I, you know, I need to, uh, you know, I need to, to know how to, you know, do, you know, ex advanced Excel or something like that or whatever. I want her just to put in what we have from, Energy Star. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna vet all of that prior to to talking to municipal staff. Um, I don't want to just click the box. I want to I want to actually earn this. So you know we are that close, and there's no reason to back off now. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being one. Yeah. You're thank welcome. you mm -hmm. very much. That's <laughs> 28 months. It's yeah. <laughs> You're this close. 
Thanks. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, any questions for Jeff? All right, next, Brant Trail update, Ken. No, just real brief history of Brant Trail. It's something that we've been working on for over six years, but it's one of those things of uh, there's a whole bunch of different properties that compose what McCandless zones now. Um, there's wetland issues and all of that that make it uh, difficult to just get in there and do stuff. And so we're at a point now where we have a simple trail where we stay on one side of the creek that uh, goes from the fill site up by Harmony and Sloop and goes down to um, Rochester Road there where the ball fields are. So that's just a real simple, straightforward trail that we have in there. Saying that it's a lot of work getting it benched on the hills and, and stuff like that. Um, this year, what I've been doing is is uh, Penn State Ag Extension using a chemical that they suggested for controlling still grass, and just gradually using it to see what its effect is on other things. Um, and we're to the point where we're pretty comfortable that it gets the still grass and doesn't hurt other stuff. Um, so. <laughs> Done that in the process over the summer doing that. And so hopefully we'll at least be able to keep the still grass from overriding the trail. Um, but there isn't really a lot more we can do there until we get the deer population under control. Uh, you can't get any wildflowers and stuff established. And if the plan is, is to have uh, trail making a big loop and, and going up and connecting uh, into the adjoining trails. You know, coming this way towards um, Carter Park and going out towards Franklin Park. Um, those are the long objectives to it. And um, there's a committee that in Canvas is one that's going to be working on parts of that. And then uh, then we have to lay it out and, and do, all, do the work work. So where we are right now is we have about a mile long trail. Um, and every time I'm on it, I, I see people on it. I actually met a guy that I used to work for 30 some years ago. Um, he was walking his dog out there when I was out there the other day. So it's, it's, it is it's used. It's very hard to keep. We have a lot of trees to keep falling down, and it's, it's a big issue trying to keep trees off of it, too. So we're in the process. Um, it's an ongoing thing. And, Six years plus at this point, so we'll see where we get to. Thanks. Quick question, Ken. Was there were there folks down there today doing some sort of clearing or something? I heard a bunch of chainsaws. There was a, a another tree branch that came down, and then the uh, big tree that came down earlier this summer. They had made a pathway through it, but it was still there was still a log on the trail that. Had a branch that was embedded in the ground, so you couldn't. You needed to be done with the chainsaw and cut it up some more to be able to get it out of the way. Gotcha. Cool. Thanks again, Ken. Uh, next up, tree presentation follow up. Uh, last month we had Danielle Crumrine from. She's the executive director of Tree Pittsburgh. Uh, came to our meeting and made a presentation on types of tree, tree programs uh, we could consider as a township, and, and Bernie's been following that for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping some of you like trees. Uh, so, since I started, that's been one of the things that has been an interest area for me, and most particularly the notion of, you know, restoring our tree canopy. Um, Danielle has reported her organization works with the county and they do uh, tree canopy uh, measuring. So we had lost, I think we calculated from 2015 to um, 2020, about 35,000 trees. And next year they'll be doing the next one. And so one of the things I'd like to do, and I've really just been doing discovery since I joined uh, the committee in February, um, is to really um just like ken said there's a working group you know for uh brand trail i i kind of see doing the same thing which is kind of developing a working group that can literally get into the weeds on trees and 
kind of figure out um, how programs will form and articulate. I kind of see it maybe the Wednesday following this meeting, and it would be more virtual rather than having to you know, come back together. And ideally, it would drop into um, uh, there's kind of a PowerPoint that happy to share um, that uh, this slide is kind of at the end of. And I, I see working on that going forward, but what I'd like to do is, I've been doing a lot of discovery on the uh, Penn State day that you all participated in. I went to some of the, you know, the organizations that are all about trees, and I think that's such a big part of it is, you know, really finding out uh, and doing assessments on who's doing what. There's so many programs already happening. So it's really like this thing, um, uh, what I promised everybody is that we would not uh, start something without using the resources of all these groups that already have programs and funding. And so it really is about inviting them here. So uh, Danielle specifically, we've talked about three programs that we could feasibly get off the ground. But I think, um, you know, really starting with a, a first goal of kind of a, a you know, the McTree and me, you know, with tree canopy programs in the canvas and how can we try to achieve this goal in what time period? And then all the programs can kind of support that. So that's kind of where I see working with that. And I think what's on here is, you know, I don't know what approvals might be needed to, you know, be able to form that and, and get that launched. But, you know, I'm eager to learn how we do that. Well, well, basically we have a, the town has a project form and and you know i could walk you through that it's it's on our sharepoint site and we we don't do that with everything we do but the bigger programs we start we do that and you fill out with basically the, the title of what you're doing and you fill in what the purpose is what resources you'll need um who will be working with you and then it goes to town council and they will approve it if they agree that that's you know within our charter to do so that's that's generally the but we actually discuss it at EAC and we vote on it at EAC first and then it it goes to council. Okay. So yeah, and I see so I, I think today what I'm looking for is between you know those who may be leaving the committee and those, you know, who are joining, you know, if there's any interest in I think we already have four or five people who, you know, from the community who have said they'd be interested in right, working right. on this. So I feel like there's the early stage formation mm -hmm. of a committee to that could be a subcommittee working on this. And you know, I would just send out a Zoom link for those who are interested in joining. And we would just have kind of a monthly sub meeting where, you know, try to um divide and conquer uh with all these other groups and all these other initiatives and how to kind of pull them together into singular programs and initiatives that I guess we would then fill out a project form, go to the council and discuss it. So it sounds to me like you're looking for sort of a go or no go tonight to see if there if, if there's some support behind your idea for you even to do a project form. Well I'm not ready for the project form. I just want to form a subcommittee other people who are interested in working with me to develop these. I, I, I think we've had so many people who are interested in trees um, and doing something with trees. So it really is about the committee kind of crystallizing what those programs would look like. And then we would come back uh, to the committee with a form saying, this is what we'd like to then take to council is EAC supporting. So I, I would say that's more the process. You know, I, I don't know if a subcommittee needs approval, but and that's I guess that's my question because yeah. the yeah. the only official one we've done through EAC was our, a litter subcommittee that came together maybe four years that ago. That never had approval, official approval. Yes, it did. Are you sure? Yes. Um, he, there was the litter task force early. That's been around for a long time, but at one point it was formalized into a subcommittee, um, and approved by this okay. and. I'm pretty sure it went on a form to the town council as well. Um, but then after a couple of years, it, it formally disbanded. But that's, in, in my time here, that's the only true I mean, official subcommittee that, that we, we've yeah. had formed. But like the Friends of Grant Park, is that a formal subcommittee? No. 
So I mean, they're not even really yeah. through the EAC. Uh, yeah. I think that's where the effort started, but I think a lot of the push now comes from, from Jack working with Ken and just like Jason as well. So through some of the council so measures. It's well, more I, ad hoc then, not formal, is that? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I, th I think so because I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, you have people that are not on the EAC, not voting members, not committee members, but they're interested in these projects, and we've seen this on other mm -hmm. EAC presentations. We should be able to go ahead with that. Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we'll call it an ad hoc committee. It's not a formal subcommittee. I, and if and if or... we want to make it a formal subcommittee, that that could probably be part of the same project form, even. Yeah. Um, we kind of have to see how that plays out. If you want to keep it more, a little bit more open as you develop programs, um, I would just start with it that way and say we're looking into these types of programs. And then if there is a large scale program that comes out of that, then that might be another, another form. Like I said, it's, it's really <laughs> not a, a terribly formal process as to what goes into a project form. Generally, any new big initiative, we would do that. Yeah, and that's where I, I said that from the start when I started this. Right. Like, I just saw taking time for discovery. Oh, absolutely. You know, I didn't want to uh, propose anything. I, what I really saw is for the balance of 24 um, on some of these calls we would do, there are people who want to go out and do things today, and I don't want to stop them, mm -hmm. you know. So I think part of that, but most of the planning would really go into what would we want to do for 25. Right, um, right. And then not stop the people who still want to go do things mm -hmm. in 24. Um, and some of the things we talked about, you know, like maybe starting a, a one day, just like the litter pickup, maybe a leak pickup day. Mm -hmm. you know? And again, that fall is coming really quick. So I don't even know if we could do that. But it's almost it could be uh won't you be my neighbor and help me pick up my leaves day you know where we do that you know I don't know right before Halloween or right after something mm -hmm. like that so but that's just kind of a loose thought on something that could be done you know before right. Right. so do you have a, a list of folks then that you've already reached out to them yeah or? well they were the people that called the committee right, right. that then you had me call some of them right 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 yeah. and i i think i've indicated before i'd be happy to be on those calls for me i'd be happy to be on those calls too yeah good good and now i reached out to you and mm -hmm. uh, i mean there's a, a whole group so that's what i do is send out an email and say hey are you all so interested mm -hmm. i i see these being even though it's ad hoc i see them structured so that we kind of don't have inputs from everybody and see what the ideas are and then go uh, i think there's so many tree groups uh, I, I am just astounded i must know of now 200 tree groups oh wow i, I don't even know how you put your arms around how many people are <laughs> doing trees uh, but i've talked to federal programs private you know forestry programs I've talked to more arborists than I know what to do with, but they all have ideas too as to what they want to do. So mm -hmm. I kind of see, you know, forming some of them into things that could work and, you know, how we could harness some of the energy that people seem to have for. Yes, please. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions or is there anything else you need from the committee? right now to get started or, or you've got the framework to go ahead and start contacting people yeah i mean i think if uh you know prior to you know if anyone has people who've expressed interest in mm -hmm. wanting to get involved and do work with you know trees and tree programs then please you know i'll show them and you know we can uh collectively try to you know keep that as a committee list for interested in trees right because everybody wants to do just different groups on that Judy did a, a planning document. That's something that kind of parallel speaks to me. And I will discuss sort of that. But yeah, um, and that did that's more of a guide just to developers and folks that are interested in well to, for the planning commission to be able to point to that to developers and say, please try and choose your development plan from this list. And also hopefully be able to point um homeowners to that as well. But it's not really the yeah. focus to, to um, forward the effort to plant more trees. That wasn't really the. Right. It, it doesn't really do that per se. Um, but but yeah, it could certainly. 
But I think it can be used more. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it's so well done. And I feel like, um, you know, that whole communication cycle, how do we take the evergreen stuff that's been done and how do we just kind of keep it out in the public realm? Well, one of the things I think that, that there's always, um, we haven't had capacity for, but I think would be great is on the EAC page on the town's website, we could be posting a lot more information um, and even links to other things, you know, and so that's potentially something that could be posted there for, yeah. you know, it, it, it was written for developers, but we could either put something that's more resident facing or uh, just put it out there for residents um, who may not really be aware that it exists. Right. And it only goes down as far as it's, it's large trees, understory, evergreens, and shrubs. Didn't even get into perennials and vines and <laughs> so much more out there. It's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah, and that's it. You have to start somewhere, though. And that's what I'm learning is it's so big. You got to I start know. somewhere. I know. know. So ultimately, we'll do Ken's entire ecosystem, and he will be king of the ecosystem. <laughs> and we'll just plug things into the ecosystem is what I've also learned. It's all part of the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's a bigger topic, I think, than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> they all turned into that. <laughs> so... To be clear, um, if if we were to direct a, a developer or you know on you know our list, how do they go to how do they go to get these? Well, lists? they they get that through planning commission um, in their approval process, and the plan planning commission. I don't know if it's on their site. Yeah, was gonna say, is it on their page? Here, it's look. it's referenced in the zoning, okay, uh, zoning code or the land development code. Uh, it is referenced in there, so that's how it's directed to developers anybody okay putting in an application i mean what i would like to see and i i'm, I'm not sure because i i can't remember i guess it's not a requirement but i know our parking lots as these 90 degree day hits uh i, I look for that one little shred of a tree <laughs> and we're all fighting for that little yeah, bit of shade yeah. but you know i i feel like as we've had more hot days that's one thing i noticed in all the parking lots and we can let the you know, trees sure. it's uh you know there's one over by lowe's and i was kind of getting <laughs> yeah yeah but i guess it's not a requirement um i i guess there's a couple here and there but i've noticed that on I mean, like, because I have a convertible, right? So right I always right. kind of park under uh, shade, and there is none in the Canlos parking lot. So I don't know. So that may be something, right? Right. That you know we try to do function things in the code, right? Yeah, but it's an idea. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not a plan yet. It's not a program. <laughs> 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 Any other questions for Bernie? Thank you. For all the, all the effort you put into that, just to express it, get overwhelmed with how much <laughs> there is, but, but you've got a, a great plan to start digging into it. So thank you. Uh, the next item I had on for project updates was just to, to kind of hit up myself and Dawn and Ryan, if he's got something he wants to, to follow up on. Um, just on projects we have pretty much been responsible for and where they are and, you know, what may possibly be the future for those, I guess. Uh, I have two, yeah, I, I had worked one with a lot of the speaker series events. Um, I didn't do a lot going out and finding the subjects. Generally, I had other members or other people in the community come to me with topics and I was able to facilitate putting them on um, through you know the town, the Heritage Center and Northland Library uh, at, but I never did really have a regular schedule of events going on. I, I know that was the the original, the original plan, but that's that's still there, and, and probably looking for somebody to to pick that up. If that's, you know, I'm I'm more than than willing to to help with my contacts to get it get it going. Um, but that's that's where that one stands. I don't have anything. Our last presentation was back the sustainability back in May. And I don't have anything planned. We had some some ideas, uh, never really got off, off the ground. And how many how many do we normally do a year? You know, in the program, I didn't start the program. Uh, that was Angela Woods 
on the committee before me. And then she left the committee. I kind of took her information. Her She was trying to get them quarterly. And when, when she first started, that was her thing. And she had, she had quarterly speakers come in. Um, since then, it's been once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. yep. And that, I mean, quarterly is a lot of work. Yeah, and unless you've got people that already have the programs that are coming in, if you're starting from scratch gathering, that's that's a lot of work to do for a year. But I still think one or two would be great. It's it's good publicity for us. The Heritage Center likes doing it, so does the library. So and I know we always had a list of lots of topics. It's just, you know, and I, I think the last thing I looked into was through uh PUC, not PUC, um PC. PRC, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. <laughs> recycling people. Right. Uh, they they put on events, and I tried contact contacting them. I think last spring or last winter, they actually have a form online to contact them if you want them to come do a presentation for you. And I never could get anyone to respond. Um, but my initial uh, looking online, it looks like they do charge for those. But I never talk to anybody in person to see if for an organization like this, they could they could do something different for us. Okay. So that was that was my next next up. Uh, other two projects are the landscape planting guide that we've we've been talking about. I've been wanting for for three years to expand on it. Uh, pretty much that's what it is. It's a structure. It's a start. But there's so much more out there. Um, I put on our SharePoint site all the reference materials I gathered which once again is just completely overwhelming. <laughs> uh, there's some great publications out there that talk about native plantings in the state of Pennsylvania, but I didn't want to put them on the list without researching them myself and making sure they they work in Western Pennsylvania. So that's that's kind of the hold up. I mean, everything that's on that list now, I did my research. They're not all natives. I would love to see it turn to be all natives, but um, there's some like evergreens, there's only so many. In the understory trees, there's only so many, but all the information is is on the SharePoint site, um, and I'm I'm more than happy to help you know help somebody if that's a that's a passion we can we can build on it some more. And the last thing is catch basin decals. I don't know if anybody's seen we we did it on some of the newer paved streets several years ago. They're just the round. Um, stickers that basically say that this this drains to our waterways um and we had we've had at first we had e, uh, eac folks putting them out and then matt worked with students and we had some of the interact club at na putting them out for us and then that kind of the interest kind of kind of waned for a little bit and i have i think at least 250 decals in the back of my car <laughs> along with the, the adhesive and everything and I've I also put together lists of, of newly paved roadways from the last couple of years and some maps. So um, I would love to turn that over to somebody as well. And, and that's and, on SharePoint. The, 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 the newly ooh. paved streets I thought was on SharePoint. No, did I? I think I think so. You know what? We need to get up on SharePoint too. There's a wonderful instructional video featuring I Judy. I believe I did. <laughs> is the video up there? I think we, it is. We made that for the I'm students. Sure it it was an excellent piece um, of yeah. cinematic work. And um, the um, uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to say about it was with the Interact Club, we, we just need to post um, this uh, project again with them, especially at the start of the, the school year. So if somebody's willing to pick up the decal project, Matt can work with you to <clears throat> reach out to the clubs. We 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 Matt will explain that all to you later, but we've spent a lot of time trying to establish relationships with the student organizations and it's taken a long time and uh, we finally have a few relationships. So um, and that's that's all I have for my project. So Don, I'll one more question on that. Yeah. So so it seems like every year, I mean you're gonna have kids. Um, you know they're gonna they're gonna graduate, and so you have new class. You might have more work new kids. So every year you sort of wait for new kids to come on the Interact Club or any Interact Club, and, and you wait for new paved mm -hmm. streets, right? Yeah, and Posted. and I guess I do need to go back and look because what we did is I put a, an Excel spreadsheet together, and then I believe Miss Lombardi made a, a Google Doc out of it, so the students were able to just access it that way, look at the streets to be done, and then you know sign their names when those those sections are done. <clears throat> So that's how, how that was organized. And I provided several bags of, of equipment 
the, the decals, the, um, the adhesive, some gloves, you know, some safety equipment, um, some, some vests. And then they were, they were instructed to, to look at our video <laughs> and there's instructions in with the, the equipment as well. And, and one other thing, the decals that we have, we have so many of them that it will probably never go through them. But should we ever go through them, we definitely would want to replace them with something more sustainable. They don't last very long. They get crappy um, sun, like sunburned pretty quickly. But Jack Casey had looked into uh, actual metal ones that get attached to the storm grates. Um, so something to think about if we ever mm -hmm. work through that cache of existing stickers. Mm -hmm. And just that that spreadsheet, that Google sheet is something that I generated. Uh, so I actually have that if we okay. want to add to that at some and point I or whatever. Right now it's it's sitting on my Google Drive with a bunch of names on it and streets that have been completed okay. and stuff like that. A, a lot of it, a, a lot of the ones that were on that list more than I thought had have been done. So that's good. Yeah, they they did a lot. In fact, they and they went through all the supplies we gave them, I think, didn't they? Yeah, yeah um, I believe so, yeah. So then it just, you just need to get some more to them. That's all. And I, I'm pretty sure I did a new spreadsheet last year when I was trying to get them for Theo to go out. So let me see what else I have for a spreadsheet and I can, can get that to you, Matt. Thanks. So my projects were uh, the rain gardens up at the Heritage Center, which, you know, I, we haven't touched this year. They look horrible this year. Um, but there there have been efforts in the past couple of years to try to reclaim. There's five rain gardens that were more or less donated to us by the Southwestern Audubon Society. Um, and the we've just done a whole horrible job. They were neglected for 10 years. Um, and and we started to try to reclaim them, but quite honestly, the job is bigger than the amount of volunteers that <clears throat> that we had, um, and we need to come up with a more sustainable plan. Um, so, as part of my outgoing, which I, I haven't completed it yet, but I have a a rough plan that I think we're going to have to just sort of shoot to council and just sort of put it back on their laps. Um, but I think I think it is possible, uh, uh, you know, to to. Uh, do that. Um, so, so I'll continue to work on the rain gardens. We've generally put together work days in the fall. Uh, it's been too hot during the middle of summer and in the spring, uh, we don't always know, or don't, we haven't completely identified everything yet. Um, that's good and, and what's bad. Um, so, um, there will be a couple work days in the fall. I'll work with the, nor the normal channels to get those set up. Um, and we did take a bunch of clippings this uh, early summer, um, and those have all taken. So there's roughly like 35 little cuttings that hopefully will do well over the winter and survive, and then we'll have those to put back. But uh, part of the problem is we have a lot of empty space in the rain gardens, and, you know, nature loves a void. So those empty spaces fill with bad stuff. Um, and so having good stuff to put in place when we do clear those spots is going to be key. Um, otherwise, we're, we're we're sort of fighting a losing battle. Um, so anyway, I, I I'm going to put together a little bit of a plan that we'll submit to council. Uh, I don't really feel like it's a fair project to keep on the EACs back, um, but we'll see what they say. Uh, so that's the rain gardens. Um, Which, by the way, I want to interrupt and say how much work Dawn has put into those the past couple of years. I mean, how many of your own hours, you and your family, and yeah. out there working all the time, plus organizing crews to come out and have work days and, and educational work days as well. So yeah. that yes, was, that was a lot of work. And and if they ever get looking good again, I'd, ha I'd be happy to come back and do educational <laughs> stuff if they ever look good. Um, so that was the rain gardens. Um, and then I sort of took the lead on some of the community day events we have. There's National Night Out uh, Community Day in September and then McCandless Winterfest um, on trying to create some sort of activity for the kids that involved some sort of um, nature theme to it. Uh, I will say this, we in the past for Winterfest, we did decorate trees for whichever group it was. I think it was the activity committee, which is no longer a thing, um, but they may still have the trees and wanna know if you guys wanna decorate them. Here's what happens. Um, you decorate them and then what you get back is, is very little because the wind, they're, they're left outside. So. 
the ornaments get damaged in years past we tried to have like nature themed ornaments that were all you know handmade and stuff like that it's 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 not worth it it gets trashed so um something else probably has to be thought of there. so so we stopped doing the tree for winter fest but we've always had a kids activity mm -hmm. um and and then we've tried to have some more adult themed activities uh that that matt ran last year that were good so um, if somebody wants to take over that, that would be great. If not, I'm, I'm always available to help out with that fun kind of stuff. So uh, continue to maybe do kids activities or maybe help you guys think of ideas if you need them or anything like that. Um, and then I helped with the litter uh, pickups. I was always part of the subcommittee on that. That is actually a lot of work. Um, and I know that um, there's some disappointment that we're not going to do the fall cleanups anymore but honestly the bandwidth that it takes to put those events together is we're seven people uh, and and not all of us are able to work on the litter cleanup and we have a lot of things going on and many of us still work and it's just too much so um but i'm con you know going to continue to help with that because the organization the logistics that go into it more than anything the recruiting of people i think is what takes time in advance that's hard. It's always hard getting people out um, to the event. So um, happy to continue to help with that. We talked about some ideas yep. for, for for next spring, including maybe doing some tree plantings at some of, in some of our green spaces or some other events like fishing. Um, I think that's it. Is that much of it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, if you think of anything else, just make sure the information is passed on. Um, and and Ryan, um, any any thoughts on? I joined this, the fight light pollution, um, and that's I got to about complaining about it here, and that's about as far as I got. I had a bunch of information on my computer, but I can I never got around to organizing it. You came to Community Day, I think, last year. One of the events last year with with information. Some yeah, I did a little bit. Uh, I wish I could have done more. Like I told you know, Judy, I some some tips and got the information out. So don't don't tell yourself too much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I uh, joined. I think I joined a little too early to be of a, a great use or a great help. But uh, yeah, that's that's it. I, I it's all on my computer. <laughs> it's all on the internet. There's stuff out there. Council ever gets serious about wanting to do something and you know update ordinances on light, you can give me a call. I'll be glad to give you some tips, like uh, you know, that, that want to protect eye, you know, people's eyes. These night lights are just, you know, like I said, really bright. Um, we're going to find out in 10 years, you know, people start getting early macular degeneration. Uh, but that's it, you know. Um, there's ways to prevent it. And there's, I never got the information out, so. Well, question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So why didn't that get to council for legislation? Oh, I never, I never drew anything up. Like, I never got to organizing it. I have, like, it's all a mess and. It's just I can never get around to it. So my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Does anybody at council care about that? I don't think there's any. I don't think it's ever will really come out. Yeah, I don't really think it's ever been on our minds yet. But yeah, there's a reason that it can't get on our minds. Yeah, it never got beyond the incubation stage. No, no, unfortunately, incubated. yeah. We've got the project details and after that life just took me away so yeah. <laughs> it'd be nice to drive down 19 not get blinded by the Eliza buildings lights and that's right oh I, I, yeah, I never lose anything in the folder about light pollution they're just so uh, this stream of consciousness yeah and, basically like... yeah I can't <laughs> organize I'm not good at organization to be honest with you but uh yeah that's it so let's take up that <laughs> Thank I have you, a Ryan. yard sign <laughs> okay so that's unless anyone else can think of any other questions you have for for Don or myself or, or Ryan um none of us are going anywhere so you can always always fill you in on something we missed uh next up I had was going through some of our community outreach items uh first up Matt with the the student members application do we know where we are there you or John we don't uh John where are we Zero, other than that one person a while ago who was interested, and they haven't submitted anything yet. Okay, cool. Uh, so, um, just to give a, a brief overview of what's being discussed here, uh, 
we started last year a student uh, EAC member program, essentially. Uh, so we had a student member from October until uh, June, and uh, she would um, she helped us out with uh, a lot of uh, project ideas. Um, she worked on some um, getting some social media news out about our litter pickup. Uh, we also uh, have them pick kind of an area of focus or an area of interest that they have, uh, write a McMail tip, uh, write an article for the crier, uh, that type of thing. So we are in the process of collecting applications for this year. Um, the students need to be need to live in McCandless and be either juniors or seniors, uh, rising juniors or seniors. Um, we don't have any applications yet, as John just said. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how we will address getting more. Uh, once school starts, we can send out information to the teachers. And I know that school starts in a couple weeks here. So I can try to get some information out that way. Our deadline right now for the application is August 31st. Um, I would say if we don't have any applications by then, we will probably extend it. The goal was to have the applications in by then, do the interviews and the approvals in September, and then have our student member join us in October. Um, if things get pushed, then probably uh, you know, they wouldn't join us until November or something along those lines. But um, that is the that is the plan. Uh, I needed to find out. I think we had talked about it, but I can't find the actual dates as far as when we need. So first of all, I need to know the order of events, right? So I know that we need to interview any applicants that we get. Does this committee need to approve? whoever we are suggesting before town council approves, or does it just go straight to town council for approval? Oh, I can't remember. I think in the past, I, something tells it me, like I, I think Matt. I maybe even sent something stuff. out by email. I don't know if we did anything formally. We, we no. did, but if I, if I remember, well, it was, uh, it was by email. And, okay. and I just have um, uh, approved by the EAC and then approved by the council. Right. So I think that we just we just had an email stream after we had the four candidates last year. Right. Right. We had an email stream that we that we got together and we then started over to John and so somebody and said, and, you know, this is the person we recommend. Right. And and Jack at the time got it on the agenda and presented it to council who approved it. And yeah. It. Okay. So my thought on that then is so let's let's assume that uh, there's a major influx of applications that show up all of a sudden, um, and we are having still staying with our uh, August 31st deadline. Um, my thought is to try to conduct those interviews starting the week of September the 9th. Um, if they can all be done that week, great, and then get it to town council get get approval from this committee via email uh well i mean if we could have all the inter interviews done by the 11th then i guess we could do it then but i think that the odds are low um well who knows if we get if we get one application then i guess they will be uh but we could try to do that get approval from the eac before whatever the uh second town council meeting is in september which would be the 26th is that right 23rd 23rd yeah on a monday yeah 23rd okay so we would try to get it to town council by the 23rd uh to get their approval and then um have that person on for our meeting on october the 9th as their first meeting ideally um but obviously if we need to push the the date then everything kind of gets pushed by a month is how i see it um, John, if we extend it, does it, does it have to be extended by another month? Right. Back it makes sense. Okay. And I just started re advertising today just because I, 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 I did see that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it did go Last back year, out. we had three really good applicants, right? Yeah, four. Four. four yeah. So were the other three juniors? Can we potentially reach back out to those and let one them know them, that we have an opening? One of them was actually ended up being the town council's. Okay, so they've member. been taken. And so I don't know if she's still in that role now or not. Um, no, the the other two, I'd have to go. Yuki, dig up. We, was it yeah. Yuki? Is she still in that role? She's she's in the council. Yeah, yeah. I think they're both, right? Both? I think they're both extended. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So 
She's yeah, on maybe the other two. There, maybe. There's two more that we certainly could reach out to, I mean, I, you know, if we're having trouble getting them. And I don't uh, see, you know, yeah. they were probably juniors last year. Mm -hmm. So they may um, not have seen the advertisement or, yeah, or it's maybe they were waiting. I'm sure to, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, they had other things going on. To get that out to them in the summertime. Did we do anything different this year or or less? Or I mean, we had four last year, but we have. Did well, anything did, change in the process? Did you reach out to um, Miss Lombardi last year at all? Uh, I don't think in advance. I don't think before school started, I did. I mean, she wouldn't have any contact with the students. No, oh, point, I know. Anyway. I know. I was just um, whether we got them away towards the end of August last year. Is that it's it's certainly possible. Uh, I feel like we definitely had it posted later last year, so you know we we were a little bit more ahead. I thought uh, this year, but clearly, um, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even sure when those applications came in last year, so I would have to go back and actually look and see. I um, I think that they might be a timing thing. Yeah, maybe I'm once school sure starts, they're more yeah. inclined to. Yeah. 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 That my <laughs> guess is that that is the case. Um, I'm trying to just look real quickly in my email here if I can, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we we had applicants by the beginning of September, but I don't think that we had started. Um, I don't think I don't it was we really started honest. actually interviewing anybody until September. So. So I, I wouldn't stress too much yet. We got it back out again. If if you could touch base with Ms. Lombardi when school starts, especially. Yeah. Here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else going on with the students? It's summertime. I don't expect there is. Yeah, no, not not at this point. <laughs> okay, thanks, Matt. All right, next, uh, Garden in the Park recap. Uh, Jeff was there most of the day. Ken was there most of the day. Uh, I came in towards the end. Um, anything we need to share, really, other than people are really interested to come talk to us? Yeah. It was like more likely attended than they have been in the past. There usually was a lot more people coming through than mm -hmm. for this year. But that actually gave you a chance to actually talk with people right. to a greater extent than, than what's going on. Mm -hmm. you know, I have people from Hampton and other townships asking us if they could join our EAC. <laughs> but well, um, <laughs> you're always welcome to come listen, but you're, I think your town has one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of good conversations. Yeah. We, were, we had a lot of activity. I mean, the tree I thought was effective. It, it was. Oh yeah, you know, it, it told the story. Everybody yeah. seen Jeff's tree? No oh, picture. It's a funky tree, tree but it, it really uh, <laughs> it, it works. So, so about five yeah, or six. Yeah, yeah, it's about six foot, and and um, I got it on Amazon. It's a cardboard tree, and I went to Mars and had these placards made up and sustainability speaker series, uh, deer control tree canopy, all these projects that we're working on are on all the branches. And it's a big tree. And and um and it, it I think I think it it sort of you know sort of initiated a lot of a lot of conversations. Yeah we wanted to have something for when we have these tabling events so that we weren't just a bunch of people sitting well, there right. at the table staring at you came by and said hi so that's right you guys saw the tree. Yeah. So okay so I think I still think it's a worthwhile Nice to be here. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. And well, they they have our names, so hopefully we'll do that again next year. Um, and of course, National Night Out unfortunately got rained out. Um, which leads to, I have a lot of supplies left for that. Let's so let's talk about Community Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, coming up Saturday, the fourteenth of September, and um, that's. Pretty much the same, but we also try and gear that one a little more towards kids as well. Yeah, that national um, right out. Yep. And I know at this point, I guess we need to get a feel for whether we have enough people in town that day to to man the booth. It's normally what about a four hour day, and we mm -hmm. can even if we can split it and do two hour shifts, um, that helps. I have enough putting dirt and worms for a hundred kids. In my basement. <laughs> We've made cups in the past for yeah, I buy little yeah. snack pack cups and I crush a hundred and some Oreos <laughs> and I have They're a couple a bags hit. of gummy worms. Um 
I, I may be available to come help out. I don't want to step on anybody else if the committee's got enough folks there. Um, I just wanted to get a feel eventually for whether we still want to do the dirt. Otherwise, I'll I'll keep the dirt and take the rest of the stuff back to Sam's. <laughs> I say we but, still do it. But I, mean, I think the kids really seem to enjoy yeah. it. it. It brings brings people to the, brings the kids to the table, and then we talk to the adults and the kids. The new committee uh, isn't even going to have a... Oh, you will have a chance to meet before community day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that week, but it's going to be real tight at that point. Yeah, but it's going to be tight. I have all the stuff for for dirt yeah. worms. I may be able to come for part of the day. Um, but if you if you still think that's a, a good thing, I'll hang on to the materials and I'm leaving. But I think back it's a again. good idea. I'm happy to take that off. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Judy. Is it yeah, I I remember last year we had some sort of problem with it as we were trying to mix them or make them or something. Do you remember yeah. what our issue was and how we the, can address it? Well, the it? issue was I I individually wrapped all the dirt portions and the worms. So we have to open up the cup and then pour that in. And it wasn't, because I tried to keep it kind of sanitary and, and you know self-contained, but it didn't work super well. It was pretty messy. So what I have this time, I have, I think four big Tupperware containers and some and some spoons. And you're just going to have to open the container, spoon it in, close the container. Um, the worms, I have I have a big bag and I have some tongs. <laughs> we can pick some worms that we could use tongs for the dirt. We could talk about how to do that. But I did not individually package it this time. Okay. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. Okay. I, I do also recommend gloves if we want people to actually take them and eat them. Just people will feel that. more safe if we're I using would, gloves. Yeah, Hand good. sanitizer on the table, too. Um, but yeah, I do not have clubs. So Jeff, you can't be there for community I'm, day. I'm out of town for community day. But we'll need the tree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so... Matt, you'll be there, right? Yep. Uh, Mark, oh, Mark will be there, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm supposed to be there. I think we're doing the game show, uh, right. assuming right. we can get everything that Which we need one? in order to do that. The not You're not that bright or the recycling game show? The recycling game show. Nice. Awesome. That's right. Because we've you've already had some discussion or at least some contact with Abby on what we need. And it sounds uh, like we have our I, or a copy Jeff did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't heard any of the results of any of that. If we are getting a space that's gonna allow for that, if we're gonna be able to get a sound system of any kind, things along those lines. So we're gonna need to know the answers to those questions before we because what we don't want is to kind of do it. I, I don't want to do it halfway. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Oh, right, I want people right. to actually enjoy it and participate and things like that. Um, so, but Jeff, you did. You gave Abby some pretty pretty detailed information. I think I think it got back to Matt, and I, and I, I think I started it, but then but then I think Matt really you know put the meat on it. You were you you were specific on what you wanted. I thought. I I think so, but I don't remember hearing any sort of results from that. No. I mean, I haven't. I I don't think that that's been resolved in any way, uh, unless I'm. Remembering incorrectly, so I'll, well, I'll go back and take a look at it. But thing to say, uh, I, yeah, I I told her we're looking for a situation where three contestants are sitting next to each other, space for a scoreboard of some kind, like a whiteboard, a space for a host to be out in front asking the questions, and of course somewhere to put speakers. Uh, and then there was no response. That was sent on July 11th. Okay. Okay. But I, I really think we need somebody that's going to kind of lead this because it's it's not going to be me this time. So um, lead in at least the conversations with Abby, making sure we have what we need um, and making sure we have the representation behind the table for, for the evening. So so who's that, Matt? The, the Matt? That'll be Matt. You and I will do that, right? I mean, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll connect with Abby and we'll, um, we'll make sure we get... Because... Last year we were the music was loud. Yeah. And no, but am I, am I mixing of that? No, but she knows about that. I was at the ad hoc uh, meeting about community day a couple weeks ago with her and, and we brought up the fact that um, our our location was horrible for sound and other people had complained about it as well. It's just um, too loud. So she's gonna reconfigure, hopefully. Okay. The layout. Yeah. Cause we had at community day, we were just very close to the band. Yes. So it's yeah. very difficult to talk to people. We did not do the game show then. We did that. We did the game show Winterfest, where That's it was true. it was also quite loud because it was inside and the DJ was not terribly far from us. Though it worked like that absolutely worked in that situation. Yeah, yeah. But if we were where we were last year at Community Day, 
I don't yeah. think it would work very well because people can't okay. wouldn't be able to hear us. Got it. Okay. okay. It be, it because because it's coming up fast and we'll only have one meeting before it. Um, we're gonna you will do a crap on this one. I mean, well, I, I can. I was prepared for National Night Out to make seed bombs um with the kids um in little launcher thingies. So I could still do that. I mean, I have the stuff. And we can do both. I and mean, I'm available, so I'm I'm okay. happy to do it, but Okay, great. great. To make seed bombs or just work the tape? <laughs> good to know. Could use some help sometimes when there are kids, a bunch of kids. But Matt, I also would like to shoot you a, a an email about doing a posting to Jan Ellen to see if a, a student wants to volunteer to help out with the kids' craft of making the seed bombs. They've, they've been so great to us in the past. The Impact Club loves to do like one-off volunteer type things. So like we, they helped us with Winterfest in the past. We just said, hey, come help with the kids crafts. They showed up, they did what we told them. They were wonderful. They worked the whole time. Yeah, um, that sounds great. Uh, if you could send me over just kind of yeah. the details of what that what that is gonna look like so I can send them to her and say, hey, this is a project or a, this is the thing we're trying to do at Community Day. Do you have somebody, or do we wanna ask for like, four people and one per hour type of a thing or you know what I mean like yeah you don't need a group of them that's just gonna be too uh, much. yeah I think that's too much I wouldn't do one or two right I just I don't think there's I my concern is that no one will want to do all four hours oh, yeah. And yeah so is it, there a way that we can break it up well maybe two 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 hour shifts how okay. about that yeah and it but is can we confirm it's four yeah. hours and what are the times on that four to eight Yep. Four, four to eight. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we'll have four. We'll have four people sewn up in, yeah. you know, to our shifts. Yep. Okay. Great, Ruby. Uh, and then Winterfest will come along, but <laughs> we we learn from every one of these events, and then we plan for the next one. Winterfest will be what early spring. And I, I I did put that on the first paper Saturday here, and, yeah, for Saturday in December. Um, and just a, a quick item on here, just um, as we put together different structures for volunteers, whether it's with our roadside cleanup, whether it's with the tree programs, anything, um, everything I I see Abby with Parks and, and Rec is trying to do the same thing. So we really really need to work with her in with yeah. the volunteer networks. Um, I know you came up with a, with a great framework. I think we should contact her before we, you know, yeah. even expend a whole lot more of our own energy to find volunteers. Because yeah, it, and let's if not she keep banned let's with, not duplicate. to share that with us or help manage that, that's great. Right. You know, she's we employed. Could help her, she could help us. I mm -hmm. think that that could work out really She's an official employee, well. you know. Sure. So her, mm -hmm. In fact, she's, if, if you look she's on the, great. the um, town website under Parks and Recreation, her contact information is there. And she she has done work with us and she's ready to work with. Okay, that's all I have for community outreach. Uh, any other community outreach items I missed? Yeah. Um, next up, some miscellaneous items. Uh, September McMail tips. This is always the part, every month we, we try and put some sort of an environmental tip into the McMail. And so we we don't really have a formal way to assign them. I, I tried at one point going alphabetically down the list, but we tend to just kind of go with the volunteer that maybe has an idea that month. Um, and then if nobody volunteers, I'll point to somebody. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has has some thoughts on um, something we need to bring up. And sometimes it's based on seasonality too. Right, exactly. Um, you know, if there's if there's something that would be a recycling tip or or um I've done in, I've done things in the past regarding um Christmas trees and wreaths and pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you composting pumpkins, different things like that. Ken has done a lot of deer control. I mean, this is sort of a deer control season coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, three trees here in the spring before they follow us. And, and Don did a great one on invasive species really this past month. Thank you. Really yeah. good. Um, 
yeah, painted some on, on light pollution and so. When, can you, John, remind me, when does this actually come out? So the SNAPS edition is gonna come out on Friday, August 30th. So it's basically it's usually you the first Friday of the month or the last Friday of the month, whichever is closest to the first day of that month. So are we looking at one to do, is this September one that's on the agenda here for the one that's coming out in August or the one that's coming out in September? Well, it's first to September. Yeah. It really is first September. Okay. I just I was just curious because I was wondering if we wanted to do something about um leaves and leaf pickup and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know if it's it might be too early for that. Maybe. I think for, Joanne for or, end of August. And I've never done one and I would love to actually do it on leaf and leaf pickup okay. with the municipality, but also like maybe um, you know, plant the seed on kind of community we pick up day okay. um, and it's a little early but we could at least project maybe two dates that you know people can come out and help neighbors do leaves that you know they okay. might want help I, I think ultimately we talked about organizing it where people sign up and said like help it in my mm -hmm. yard I don't think we're ready for that right, but I right, think the right. suggestion of you know working with neighbors for assisting exactly. yeah. is more of the way I would frame it Okay. And, and I think on the note of leaf pickup, it feels like every year it needs to be extended. Because, <laughs> I mean, just, just for the record, yeah. I just want to point this out. I mean, True story. you know, and it's because I know, uh, is it the oaks that don't fall? Yes. And mm -hmm. so I know I've got a bunch of oaks and I know, and, you know, it ends and they haven't even fallen yet. Yeah. And all my neighbors just get angry about it. So <laughs> I just kind of want to ask about why why we wouldn't time the municipal leaf pick up with when leaves actually fall. That's a great question for public works. Okay. <laughs> um, um, thanks. And did you have another idea too? Yeah, to get yeah, to people's intentionality. Mm -hmm. um, so late summer to early fall is actually the time that you want to uh, treat Tree of Heaven. Make sure that it's not... Did you I just that? did the article. I did she, the article. If you look at... Okay. <laughs> she, just did that. Um, Which is why, because this is the time of year when you exactly. treat it. <laughs> so perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. So hold that. You can do it again. But yeah. to that point, um, and we've never put together anything official, but it might be good sort of just like we have a, a listing of all of our community outreach activities to sort of do, you know, at least by quarter, if not by month, ideas um, uh, that are yeah, good, yeah. just be, you know, because why reinvent the wheel for the new committee? Every time we have new people, they can at least look at what we've sort of done in the past and know. And there's no reason you can't with the timeliness. So the same topics over against slapping something together on a document would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, They're I, all in our map Yeah, that. and I probably can dig up the ones I did and stick them in there. That's not a bad idea. Um, I'll have to, because even my filing system at home, I somehow uh, I'll, make I'll make a list. I'll make the yeah. mail. Yeah, I, I have to do so. Okay. Yeah, we do yeah, have but... a um, SharePoint document set up that we'll share with you guys. Um, but that's that's a yeah. We'll make a great um, idea calendar of mail tips. Uh, that's what we we'll call it. And all all of those old McMails are on the website, so you can right. yes, also, bye. You can also bye. access them. Oh, okay, great. And pull it out. Right. All right, so so Bernie, then are you willing to do? I could do if, if you wanted to wait on these because these aren't falling yet. I could do one last <laughs> light pollution tip. No, I'll just give a nice little list <laughs> of what you know the ways to do it. Just something simple. Don't offend anyone with humor. No, <laughs> I'll just make it simple. Um, I don't. What do you think? Too? Yeah. I mean, you were. I mean, I'm good with that. I, I'm I'm all about light pollution too. Okay, you, you could do the leaves next month too. You know. Okay. No, that was great, Ryan. You don't yeah. mind doing that. And then Bernie will Next keep you up for, uh, for 1st of October. Judy, did you say that he should add some humor to it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I say you have to be careful with the humor because some no people humor this time. take offense. Yeah. Well, you just, you don't want to make it too light. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, can I just ask why does every uh, suburban community think that every driveway requires a floodlight? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, it is a community standard, right? Good. Yeah, I know. And and I'll admit, we we are bad because my husband keeps a work truck parked in our driveway that has been broken into. 
but I've still tried to get him to put a dimmer light in there. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> I know. Well, sorry if I, that hit him, but I, 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 I yeah. oh, I know. I, I get it. Um, okay. That's the McMail tips. Uh, next up, Dawn has brought up, and, and maybe you talked about this before, and I'm, I'm sorry yeah. if, if I kind of forgot about it, but, um, an idea of affiliate membership for the EAC. Yeah, so a couple years ago, so it's every year there's a national EAC um, workshop or something. It's, it's a yearly event. Yeah. It's great. Uh, and and it's it takes place in February, but they record the whole thing and you don't have to attend it. You can watch the videos later, which are great. And then they give you access to all that stuff. So we've all shared in the past. Um, it's the, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Pennsylvania, what's the outreach? Um, oh, yeah. uh, I, it's, it'll we can serve PA. Thank you. Right, we can right, serve PA. Right. It's, a, it's a great website. They have so many great resources on there, but anyway, somebody from one of the EICs probably out East had presented about, uh, having an affiliate member program as part of their EAC. And it would require us to just change one line in our resolution that gives us the authority to be the EAC. So the council would have to approve, uh, I guess, a new resolution with that one sentence added that allows for affiliate members. But essentially, the idea is it's an affiliate member program where you have people who are more or less subject matter experts who are willing to do certain projects for the EAC or for the town in association with the EAC. Um, and, and those folks are sort of loosely associated with the EAC. They're not committee members, they don't vote, you don't have to attend meetings, um, but you still sort of lend your expertise. And I just thought it would be a nice way to sort of officially stay tied to the EAC as I was leaving. Um, I don't know if Judy would have an interest in being an affiliate member, but I know she's interested in helping with certain things after she's off the committee um, because it's all, it's all good and fine right now. Everybody knows everybody, but you know, a couple more years, we're going to have more turnover and you know, in a couple of years, people won't know who Dawn Miller is or what she knows or what she's ever done. So, you know, it's sort of a way of keeping track of those people and keeping them involved. Um, so it would require that one sentence change the resolution, like I said, and we would have to uh, float it past council for their approval. But the committee, uh, I guess, sort of needs to discuss and vote on whether or not we would want to present that to council. And and I don't know, I if I don't think you sent this out to everyone, but the one line you pulled out is town count or the one line that you would like to put in. Uh, town council may also designate affiliate members without the right to vote as necessary and desirable to allow per partic participation by other persons, students or business owners or members of conservation organizations operating with the township. A um, couple of things. Number one, we don't have the junior member in there either, do we? No. Okay, so that's just just one thing for thought. Good. Um, do, do we have to have this in our charter? I, I guess I'm trying to figure out what an official affiliate member actually means as opposed well, to... Well, I needed to do more research and I could have reached out to that. I need to still reach out probably yeah. to that EAC to see how that's different, but I don't see it as anything more than being on some Excel spreadsheet that's on the SharePoint site that says that, you know... <laughs> I'm willing to help out with this, that, and the other thing, or whatever I've been suckered into in the past. But um, yeah, I don't know. If I have to keep working on the rain gardens and stuff like that, I just figured I should have some <laughs> capacity <laughs> in some way. How is it so different than what that. Bernie's um, talking about? Well, with, she's with... talking about, uh, you know, sort of similarly, like she would, these ad hoc committees would maybe, you know, pull from that list of. Mm -hmm subject matter experts or affiliate members. We really don't need affiliate members. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's interesting. That's why I'm just trying to figure out what officially that actually means. Um, but you're saying yeah. it, you think it's just somebody that we keep kind of a permanent record. And, and I guess they could be yeah listed as part of uh, the committee or whatever. And our contact information would be somewhere for you all to have. Um, yeah, because council will change, the committee will change a couple years, and, you know, I'd like to still help out with the things that I help out with, but, you know, I have no interest in staying on a, an official, in an official capacity, mm -hmm. so. And, and the only one, only ones that have access to the SharePoint, EAC, SharePoint, are committee members. Committee members, correct. correct. 
and and that would give you access to as an affiliate would give well, you guys we would have to decide or you all would have to decide all that what you wanted that affiliate member to look like and i could do mm -hmm. more research if we're if we're interested but yeah we would have to talk about this you guys would have to talk about those kind of things do you want that person to have access you don't have to have that i mean there's no reason why the committee couldn't share with that person whatever they needed when they needed right. it if they needed it yeah um this but that's something you could certainly discuss catch all so like if there's a member that is that's in their terms and this is a way for them to stay if there's someone yeah. who maybe is thinking about joining this committee maybe they come they become in a affiliate member first a or on an flag. ad hoc committee of some sort or, or you know it's just folks yep. who just care and want to want to hand so i feel like this could be a good catch-all We've talked about, you know, friends of groups for different yeah, things and right. things too. So, you know, eventually I sort of see really what it boils down to is just an Excel spreadsheet that sort of lists everybody what they do, how to contact them, that you all would maintain and pass on to whoever the current committee is. And I think, you know, that idea is it's like a pool of people who identify with the committee. Mm -hmm. I think what I was trying to propose was, and this is how we structure them to be productive so you know there's a pool of people who are saying hey i'm here i'm a resource i'd like to be involved i think what i was proposing in the volunteer structure is well here's our events every year here's our activities you know here's how people fit in but you know i almost see the affiliate member idea being the ready pool of people who could plug into or just sit on the sidelines and saying call me if you need something so you know, I, I see them as connected and conjoined, you know, but one of them is the, um, it is the volunteer network, right? Because that's what you're offering. Yeah. Expertise, time, resource, capability. Um, but the affiliation, you know, is also interesting to have just uh, an affiliate member. I can certainly explore it more and get you more information to present at next uh, yeah. month's meeting. If that's, uh, that's probably seems like that's how we should Yeah, go. let's keep in touch about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys can vote on it next meeting. Part of the exiting member, you know, isn't that Americas instead of, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I almost yeah, feel like there's a it. way to kind of say, uh, you know, it's almost like what you're saying is there's a, like, you know, put a pin in it and say, I, I serve, and now I'm, you know, past that serving, but I'm still here to serve. Correct. I mean, I almost feel like there could be that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and it could be an affiliate emeritus member as opposed to just somebody who. However you all want to call it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I kind of. Yeah. I'm, because, I mean, yeah, the way our town is, you know, we have a town manager, whatever, they they come and go with how many we had now since I've been on this committee, three, I think, or something, four since I've been in my four years. Um, yeah, John is the only consistent thing we've had, <laughs> really, honestly. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, you know, I, I would hate for in a couple of years people to sort of forget who Judy and I were because we, we, you know, and and. Jeff, when he, you know, like we know the litter stuff, like the back of our hand and no sense in reinventing the wheel. But anyway, I'll get you more information and we can, you guys can talk about it next month. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Yep. Uh, new member orientation items. I think we've kind of gone through most of this. I think that was mainly just to just highlight the papers. Did you guys get copies of these two with the... We had the contact information and and Don Ryan and I are on here as well. Um, and if I got any of your information wrong, please correct it. <laughs> and uh, and just and something Bernie had asked for since she's she was the newest on the committee. Um, you know, she here is talking about all these events. I did put together, you know, our our a calendar of our annual events so that you kind of have a a little listing here on what we generally do every year. There's there's a lot of other things, but these are our regular, regularly scheduled things you can count on pretty much every year. Um, and I don't know, can you think of any other items we should put together for these folks? I mean, other than I guess getting them access to the SharePoint site, mm -hmm. um, which we've we've tried to archive information about our most recent projects. 
um, reference materials, that sort of thing. John, do you take past members off the SharePoint site at some point? Can you? Generally, yes, whatever we're using. But yeah, even though you have to IT do something this. I struggle a lot to get actually burning access. I don't say still yeah. don't get access to it. So I if you could just give me a week or two to get some stuff up there before you yes. yank my cord. Yeah, leave us on there for a while. Yeah. Can, I have so much stuff. I gotta get it together. Yeah. Um okay. And then yeah, obviously Bernie and then then our new folks as well. So they can access that stuff. But Honestly, if there's you know any any questions you you think of that you have, we're a real informal group. Please reach out. And we'll need badges for Community Day for the new folks. Probably. Do we need to turn in our old badges? My <laughs> several badge. I keep Sorry, yeah. badges. What badges? badges. <laughs> no. Oh, you don't have this badges. badges? Speak of. Yeah, I don't know what either. I always forget mine anyway. <laughs> I've never seen a badge. Like yeah. coded badge, I should have lined it up. So I have two because I keep It's just a name tag with Tom McCandless EAC and your name on it. It's nice. It's nice. nice. A clippy one. I have events. a necklace <laughs> one. <laughs> They're very nice for table, but you yeah. should really get one. Mm -hmm. How do I get one of these? John, that you John, speak of John. 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 <laughs> two badges all around. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. Um. If there's no other topics I've missed there for miscellaneous items, um, do we have a report from town council? Just to just begin the loop, we held our interviews for the town manager. We should have a verdict for the city here. So it should be wrapping up soon. I just, you know, I just want to thank you three for all your wonderful work. We're going to miss you guys a lot. We were Grateful for what you guys have done. We're glad that we're going to have three dynamic okay. new members coming on board too. So, thank you guys. Thanks, Nick. Uh, topics for next month's meeting. Um, a lot of times we put this on here just to, you know, whoever does the, the agenda kind of remembers to, to hit on it next month. Um, next month will be the reorganization meeting. That happens every September where you will uh, elect a new chair and co-chair or um, vice chair, excuse me. And then I think you also wanted to bring up uh, recycling and other recycling. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Definitely. it's too soon because I think that we're going to be, um, as I think about it, we're, we're, you know, we're going to be, we're going to have some growing pains with the new committee and we'll figure out what people are doing. But, you know, John, I, I think that the, um, the, the recycling, um, location was under was under renovation or something and we yeah. pretty much shut down um but you know we'll start talking about after in, maybe in october or november uh you know getting back in touch with them so we can so we can go and see how this works and we can be wiser and smarter and, and you know and bring information um through through tips and so forth to the community so i i, I want to you know revisit that but not right now a little bit too soon um, and before I adjourn, I was just going to say a few words too that um, how much of a pleasure and an honor it's been to, to work with this committee. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it so much. And I think I've, my biggest takeaway here is I've learned so much. Um, I came in with enthusiasm, but not a whole lot of environmental knowledge. So um, I've, I've learned so much. And I so much appreciate everyone's uh, passion and dedication to the town and the environment. Um, I'm you say I'm not going anywhere. I'm still around. I still probably show up at community day with with my dirt, my worms, um, and um, I love helping out at at roadside cleanup. So I'll still be doing that. And best of luck to the new guys because yep. you guys are just bringing an enormous amount of enthusiasm, and it's it's going to be good. Amazing. Um, and with that. Uh, I have... actually wanted to just talk real quick about the uh, the, the targeted roadside cleanup. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that we agree. So, um, you know, we would we would hold these twice a year, and and we were getting, um, you know, we were getting thirty people, forty people. Okay, maybe we got sixty one time, and we were doing it two days in the in the spring and two days in the fall, and we just were sort of petering out. Um, this past year in April. 
we put together every, we just threw everything we could at it. And, and all of our political capital was used up. We got every EAC member, we got every council member, and we got probably, you know, once we counted all the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts troops and everything, we might have had 110 people. So that, that might have been our biggest number yet. So it was a giant success. We picked up over 200 bags of litter. Um, it, it seems like it might be, although the roads always need it, it seems like it might be too soon to try to do that again in the fall. So I think that we, a few months ago said, let's, uh, let's, let's not do that. Let's wait for the spring again, because people now view it almost as a community event. Hey, this is just another extension of community events. Let's all get together and we do a big rah 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 and, and a kumbaya and we and we go out and we pick up garbage. But um, you know what I want to do is I want to um, you know go through the streets, go through the maps, see what really needs to be done. We've 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 uh, excluded sloop um, and and the bottom of Brant. Um, you know when when you go toward Ross, we've excluded that almost every time, and it needs police protection. And and so we may have a targeted group because I've been approached by different people saying, oh, you should have this. We'll do this. So there might be 20 people out there that are always the same 20 people out there, and they may want to help us with this targeted thing. And we'll have to, we'll have to pick a date uh, and we'll watch the weather. But uh, my last point about that is, John, when do we need to think about a spring date? Because it's a little bit different this year because Earth Day is going to be, um, it, it's going to be Easter weekend. And I, and I don't saying, think that's a good weekend. Probably October is the time to think about it because we do want to get it out of the range that way it's more than moment. Yeah. Okay. So we'll need to come up with a date and we'll need to come up with a rain date. Yeah. Um, and but but it's going to be what again, I think it should be one day. Um, we should concentrate on one day in the spring, not Easter, not SAT day. Uh, you know, different things like that. So, you know, so the, these things, we'll try to pick a day in April that it's still, you know, that, that, that it's good, good weather. Um, and then we'll talk about the targeted as we go forward. And and, and I too, and Nick said it perfectly, but I, I just want to thank uh, Ryan, Dawn, and Judy for, for everything, you know, the things that have, you guys have done over the course of the years. It's just been phenomenal. And, and the EAC, you know, we'll miss you and appreciate it in the township you know, appreciates it. So we know you're not going away, but uh, you guys have done a hell of a lot of good work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Yep. Yeah, thank you. A lot of, lot of help. So mm -hmm. a lot of service. Goodbye, suckers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Jeez. Jeez. Just kidding. Turn here, not on the recording, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a call, uh, a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. Okay, I'll second. second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Thank you very much. Good night.